Now tell me this motherboard doesn't look amazing. What's up guys, welcome back to another Giga Geek video. And recently I got the ROG Strix B558 in white. It looks absolutely amazing in its nice white color. And in this video, I will be doing a short overview and an unboxing of this motherboard. And without any further ado, let's begin. So starting off with the front side of our motherboard, we have a picture of it and we have the, the title of it with this cool little rainbow -y effect. So if I turn the box around, it'll change colors. It's pretty cool. Next up, we have our badges. First up is the, it's PCIe 4.0 ready. So you get the most bandwidth from the first top slot. We have Aura Sync for all your RGB devices. It supports AMD Crossfire. It's the B550 chipset. It supports Ryzen uh, and AMD processors. And the next two badges we have are, it has a third gen AMD Ryzen desktop ready badge, which basically means you don't need a BIOS update. And same thing for the next badge, we have a Ryzen 5000 de desktop ready badge, which will m make sure that you don't need a BIOS update for both 5000 series and 3000 series CPUs. So for the back set of the motherboard, we have some of our specs, for example, the um, IO, what's on the IO, the USB, the form factor, how big it is, the expansion slots, and we have some of our special features. For example, we have 14 power stages for a CPU so it could handle overclocking. Uh, we have a BIOS flashback button so you don't need to uh, have, have an older CPU to update the BIOS. And we have 2.5 gigabit ethernet and dual M.2 heat sinks. Now, let's get to unboxing. So as I open it up, we first have our nice white motherboard. Let's remove this. I'll get to uh, reviewing this in a second. Next up, these are our, our accessories. So as I open this up, we first have our SATA cables for our 2.5 inch SSDs or hard drives. Uh, we have a manual, so for new time builders this is very useful, even for me. We have some nice stickers that you can put this on your case and brag to your friends what's inside of your PC. Uh, we have a keychain to put for your, uh, on your keys. We have some extra paperwork, um, just some information. We have a thank you note, uh, a M.2 pad. Some standoffs for your M.2 SSDs. Make sure not to lose these if you have an M.2 SSD. These are very important. Uh, we have some zip ties. I really like when motherboard manufacturers give these because it makes cable management a lot easier. And we have another cable. Now let's review the motherboard. Now let's move on to the motherboard aesthetics. Starting off the IO plate, this is like a, a mouth-watering IO plate. It's nice that white color. I just love white themed PC parts. I don't know why, but I really like them. And on it, we have some a silver ROG logo with some silver texting, dare to play, just that uh, gamery vibe. We have some engraved text, which which looks really nice. And next up, let's move on to the VRM heat sinks. These are silver and they, um, accent the IO plate really well and they have these lines going through them and they go out through the entire motherboard which looks really consistent and whoever designed it really thought about what it's going to look like inside of a case and how to make it really consistent so it won't look tacky in a way. Same thing with the M.2 heat sinks, they complement the IO plate and they have those lines going through them again. Uh, next up, we have the chipset heatsink. It has some gamery text on it, game on, whatever. Just, you know how RG is. They're very gamery with their products. And we have some, again, this kind of RGB kind of text going on here. So as I move my head around, it changes colors, which looks really nice. Asus, you did a really good job on the motherboard aesthetics. Now let's move on to the more technical specs of this motherboard, starting off with the RAM. We have four RAM slots and it can support up to 128 gigabytes of memory, which is a lot of memory. Most people don't even need that much. And that RAM can be clocked up to 4,600 megahertz if your RAM supports it. That is absolutely mind boggling. Most RAM is from 2,666 to 3,600 megahertz and 4,600 megahertz is absolutely insane. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to the uh, VRM, VRM design. We have 12 power stages for the CPU and two power stages for the RAM. 
that'll be great for overclocking a 5600X and maybe even a 5800X. I'm not so sure about a 5900X or a 5950X. Those are a bit more um, power hungry and need a better um, VRM uh, design. Next up, we have our two M.2 uh, slots. The first one is PCIe 4.0, I believe, and the second one is PCIe 3.0. So if you're when, if you're rocking a um, a 4.0 drive, put it in the first slot, and if you have a 3.0 drive, put in the second slot. And you can also put a 3.0 drive in the first slot if you really want to. Now let's move on to the PCIe slots. The first slot is X16. The second slot is X1. We have uh, the second, the third slot is X16 again, and the last two slots are X1. So you have a lot of expandability. You can put Wi-Fi cards, Bluetooth cards, capture cards. It's a lot of stuff. Now let's look at some of the connectors on the, on the motherboard, starting off from the bottom, working our way to the right side, and then moving our way up top. First up, we have an HD audio header. Then we have a Thunderbolt header if your case supports it. We have a debug header, and we have two RGB headers. The, the first RGB header is four pin, and the second one is three pin. Make sure to check if your LED ship or RGB fan has four pin or three pin. You, want, you don't wanna mix those up. If you do, you could fry the LEDs, which w wouldn't be that good. Next, we have some sensors if you want to use those. We have a, next, we have a chassis fan header, and we have two USB 2.0 headers. After that, we have another chassis fan headers, header, and then we have our front panel connectors for your power switch and your uh, reset switch and all those. On the side, we have six SATA ports. Then we have a USB 3.0 header, our 24-pin motherboard header to give all the juice to our motherboard. And now moving up to the top, we have two chassis fan headers and another four pin header for our um, RGB stuff. And now we have a four, an eight pin and a four pin CPU power connector. And yeah, those are all of our connectors on our motherboard. Now let's talk about some of the extra features that, that this motherboard has. First off, we have something called ASUS OptiMem 2, something that just uh, probably a marketing thing. But anyways, it allows for more efficient RAM overclocking through uh, better traces on the motherboard. Next, we have AI noise. This is this is probably the coolest thing. Use AI on the motherboard to make the audio and uh, sound better. For example, if I have a hiss in the background, it'll remove that using AI. I found that I find that really cool. And now we have some Supreme FX audio technology. It's used to drive powerful, if you have like a powerful speaker, like um, like really nice speakers that need a lot of juice to run, this will handle that no problem. Now let's go on to some of our back panel IO. So I'll go from left to right and then top to bottom. First up, we have a USB 2.0 port. Next up, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port. We have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. After that, we have another display port. And then we have some audio, audio jacks over here. After that, we have a BIOS flashback button for your BIOS flashing. Then we have some USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports. Then we have a type C port. I'm really happy to see a type C port, type C port on this motherboard. It's like the future of um, connectors. Next up, we have some USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports. Again, we have an HDMI port over here, and then again we have some gold-plated audio jacks. And uh, I kind of I covered everything on this motherboard, and it's a overall it's a really nice motherboard, and I would recommend it to a lot of people. And now let's go on to the outro. I hope you guys enjoyed the overview and unboxing of this motherboard. I really like how it looks and it has some really cool features. And I'll be using this motherboard in a frost white build soon. Hopefully I can get my, my hands on a white GPU though. Um, and anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share this video, and subscribe for future videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.